Hello and welcome to our online benefit service on this fifth Sunday of Easter. It's lovely to welcome you from one of our buildings, now that I'm allowed to lead inside the church building. My name is Reverend Chris Hutton and I'm the Rector for the Urshan Benefice. Well, today we're continuing to look at the book of Acts, the little series of four sermons that we are doing. We have seen how the early church was devoted to one another and to God. They were a devoted church. We've seen how they were a praying church, how they prayed at every opportunity. And today we're going to see how they were a generous church. So join with me in the service. The aim is that we say these words together that will appear on the screen, knowing that others around the benefice and around the country and even into Europe, we're saying these words together at the same time. So let us start. The Lord be with us. Let us say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in God's church, as we celebrate the presence of God in the world, let us take a moment to call to mind and confess our wrongdoings and neglect of God's words. So we say together, Almighty and most merciful God, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to mon mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your name. Amen. And we say together. May God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And, and the colic for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death and opened to us the gates of eternal life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our mind good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and raised you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us say the creed together as we stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I'm going to hand over to two of our younger members of the Benefice, one from Arbra and one from Denton, to bring us our readings. Our first reading is from the book, The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, starting at verse 31. The believers shared their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. 
No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from John, chapter 14, starting at verse 1. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, thank you very much for reading. Well, in our affluent materialistic society, getting more money in our wallets, raising our income and accumulating more assets becomes something of a national obsession. If you can remember as far back as our general election, all the way back in December, you'd have heard different politicians competing to either offer us tax cuts or to spend more money or to do both. But in our Bible reading this morning, we meet a very different kind of society. We meet a Christian community who are committed to giving away what they had. We even see church members liquidating their assets so they could give more money to their brothers and sisters. As we look at this remarkable passage in Acts this morning, I want us to examine their attitude found in that first church. I want us to understand what motivated them to do what they did, to be so generous with their wealth. And I want us to consider whether we should be doing likewise. But before I go any further, let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that the life of the first church has been recorded for us in Acts. As we look at this passage today, help us to be inspired and challenged by their example. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as we join our passage this morning, we find a church that is experiencing explosive growth. The first church's numbers were multiplying rapidly. God was working miracles among them and the gospel was being preached boldly. As verse 34 puts it, they were testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was powerfully at work in them all. All very impressive. But it doesn't end there. Because in our passage today, Luke, the author of Acts, wants to draw attention to another impressive characteristic of the early church, their remarkable generosity. As, verse, as Luke tells us in verse 32, all the believers were in mind and heart. And no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, for they shared everything they had. As a consequence, we're told, verse 34, there was no needy person among them. In a world without a welfare state, the members of the church made sure that none of their members went without. Rather than keeping their income to themselves, the earliest Christians were investing heavily in God's work. They were obeying Jesus' command to store up treasures in heaven rather than on earth. And what is remarkable about this generosity of the first church is that it was entirely voluntary. 
and it was also sacrificial. Their generosity was free and it was abundance. The first, it was free because no one forced them to do it. They gave willingly, they gave voluntary. It was their choice. You see, the first church was a Christian family, not a state. Their generosity was not forced on them by any government agency or at gunpoint. They gave willingly and freely because they wanted to. They gave freely and willingly to their fellow Christians because they viewed them as fellow family members, as brothers and sisters in Christ. It was their heart's desire to support one another financially. In fact, the New Testament is clear that all Christians should be given freely and wholeheartedly. For example, listen to these words from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You see, our giving to the church and to fellow Christians should be a joy, not a duty, a cheerful delight, not a chore. And as well as being entirely voluntary, the generosity of the first church was amazingly sacrificial. Our Passion Act tells us not only did they give away some of their income, they even sold some of their assets and laid them at the church leaders' feet. Listen again to verses 34 and 35. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sale and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to everyone who had needs. So his first Christians didn't cling to the assets that they had. They were willing to let go if they saw a need that was to be met. So the first church was incredibly generous, giving willingly and sacrificially. But why? What motivated them? Well, over the years, I've read various biographies of all sorts of people. William Wilberforce, Thomas Cranmer, Bear Grylls, Billy Graham, C.S. Lewis. And it's really interesting in what motivates them to do what they did. It's really interesting to find out their values, their motives, what motivated them. And having read about the generosity of the first church, those first Christians, it's really far interesting to find out what values and motivates them, what made them do what they did. And they did it because those first Christians knew that they were children of a generous God. Their generosity was a grateful response to the generosity and grace that they had been shown in them. They were generous because God was generous. So for a start, those early Christians knew that God had given them his son. They knew that God had been willing to sacrifice his son Jesus for their salvation. They knew that their heavenly father had handed over his son, his most precious possession, to be crucified for them and for us. Faced with such generosity by God, we should give generous, generously to his people and to his work and he, as our an expression of a gratitude to that. But that wasn't all. As well as giving him his son, God also gave those early Christians and to us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was certainly at work in the early church. Nothing else can explain the unity of the heart and mind they enjoy together. Nothing else can explain what motivated them to give so generously to one another and towards God's work. So what motivated the early church to be generous? Well, they recognised that they had a generous God. And so having looked at the generous first church, we're left with a question for ourselves. Are we generous enough? Are we generous enough? I hope we're impressed by the generosity of the early church in Acts. I hope we're inspired by the example of Barnabas and the others in that first Christian fellowship. And above all, I hope we're inspired by the generosity of God, a God who gave his son for our salvation, a God who pours his spirit into our hearts, a Holy Spirit who helps us to love him and love one another. And many people in our benefits are incredibly generous. I'm constantly impressed by the acts of generosity that I see all around me and what people do with no fanfare 
or no expectation of rewards. I know many of you give regularly to church week by week, and it always amazes me how much our churches raise for the church and for good causes. So a huge thank you from me for all you do. But, and you knew there's a but coming, didn't you? Can I challenge you to consider, are we generous enough? During this time as the church income falls and those around us are struggling financially, could we, and not everybody will be in the position to do this, but could we be more generous and follow that, uh, follow that early church as they followed a generous God? So let, leave, let me leave you with three questions. Do you give generously, willingly, joyfully and sacrificially enough? Do you give generously, willingly, joyfully and sacrificially enough? How much of your income do you tithe? And have we tithed our wills? How much of our income do we tithe? And have we tithed our wills? And thirdly, are we as generous and gracious as the wonderful God we worship? Are we as generous and gracious as a wonderful God we worship? Let us pray that we will. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for that generous first church. We thank you that they gave willingly and they gave sacrificially. And what motivated them to be generous because they recognised that you were generous. We pray that you would show us whether we are generous enough and that we would be able to be generous with what we have. We pray in your name. Amen. And I'm going to hand over to Chris and Phil, who are going to continue as we pray. Living God, you call us to take up our cross and deny ourselves. You tell us that it is only through losing our lives that we will truly find them. You challenge us through Jesus to go the extra mile, to do more than is asked or expected of us. Teach us to give as, as you, you have, have given, given to, to us in Christ. Christ. Living God, forgive us that we find that so hard that more often than not we prefer to do as little as possible rather than as much, that we give our help, time and service and money grudgingly rather than cheerfully. Teach us to give as, as you, you have, have given, given to us in Christ. Christ. Living God, we thank you for those people who are willing to go the extra mile, especially at this time of lockdown. Those among our family and friends, in our benefits or the wider church society, or the world as a whole, who give freely of themselves, going beyond the call of duty in the service of others. Teach us to give as, as you, you have, have given, given to us in Christ. Living God, we praise you for Jesus Christ, for his readiness to go not just the extra mile, but to give his all, identifying himself with our humanity, willingly experiencing suffering and death, so that we might discover life in its fullness. Teach us to give, as, as you, you have, have given, given to, to us in Christ. Christ. Living God, we pray for all those who have suffered and are suffering from COVID-19, for those that have died, for those families and friends mourning the loss of loved ones, and for all those healthcare professionals in hospital, care home and community settings caring for those in need many in difficult and extreme situations. We also pray for our government and governments around the world that are leading, guiding and advising people in these unprecedented times. Teach us to give as, as you, you have given, given to us in Christ. Christ. Living God, touch our hearts through all Christ has done so that we may be more ready to live as his people. 
Teach us in our turn to do that little bit extra, to go beyond people's expectations, to give and to go on giving. And so may people glimpse in us a little of the love we have seen in Christ. Teach us to give as, as you, you have, have given, given to us in Christ, Christ for, for in his, his name we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. And let us continue in prayer as we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now I hand over to Joe, he'll bring us our hymn, reminding us that because we have a generous God, we can pray to God that we will be generous too. Take my life and let it be. Thank you very much for joining us for our online service. Do keep well, keep safe and keep being generous. If you have any prayer requests, do please share them with me as I'd love to pray for you and with you. And let us say a final prayer and blessing together.
the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and for evermore. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. We go in his peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.